So hey guys and um, welcome to another video of the Random Watch Dude. Uh, today I'm going to make a, just a quick uh, video for you. I've been having some thoughts actually about the uh, about the Swatch um, strategy with regards to releasing these kind of uh, cheap uh, copies of, of their very popular uh, modern luxury uh, sports watches and in particular of course I'm referring to the uh, you know that over the last couple of years they've released the the moon swatch which essentially is a like a, a gimmicky um kind of remake or, or or copy of the moon watch you know the amiga uh, the amiga speedmaster the first watch on the moon although obviously as you probably know there's a there's a bit of debate as to whether that uh, watch was the first certainly wasn't the first in space it may have been worn on the moon uh, but it wasn't the first watch in space uh, i think i think it was either seiko or, or possibly even breitling uh, that got there was it i'll have to check that one out uh, but uh, but yeah look um so swatch uh, a couple of years ago i think it was now they released uh, the you know the the range of uh, moon swatches the plastic watches uh, with a with a quartz movement in them uh, went crazy you know there was just this berserk kind of hysteria around them they were selling uh, initially for three or four times uh, their their retail price you know they were worth more percent as a percentage um, kind of profit margin if you like if you had one and you wanted to sell it they were worth uh, far more uh, in terms of the percentage profit that you could make the gross margin percent was greater for one of those than it was even for you know a, a panda you know a Rolex panda for example so you know there was a massive hysteria around them uh, I, I must admit guys I was I was never sucked into it myself I, I just I just didn't like it I didn't like the concept and I didn't certainly didn't like the execution of those watches at all uh, um, despite the fact that I'm a, a very keen kind of space fan uh, a very keen, um, you know, uh, astrological, uh, with a keen astrological interest as well, you know, in the planets uh, and in the stars and in the universe. I, I still wasn't drawn into that because I just felt it was such a gimmick. Anyway, um, I've been thinking about uh, about why, you know, why did Swatch do this? Because for me, you know, to a great degree, I think they cheapened the, uh, you know, the actual original uh, OG uh, Speedmaster. I think they cheapened that watch. I think they've, you know, kind of tainted it slightly in my opinion and, it, and to a degree i will say it's actually to a degree it's put me off uh you know potentially even buying a proper speedmaster you know because swatch thought it was a great idea to just make these these plastic copies of it and uh, and of course more recently they've uh, they've now done the same thing with the uh, the 50 fathoms you know which uh, kind of was a bit of a sleeper watch anyway everybody talks about the 50 fathoms everybody talks about how you know amazing the 50 fathoms is as a watch uh, i've never seen anybody wearing one um so i'm not sure whether that's all just kind of you know the, the the herd mentality you know once once somebody starts saying that a watch is a great watch uh, then everybody just assumes that it must be and every and then everybody decides that it's a great watch even though like i say i, I actually don't know anybody that owns one uh, i certainly don't see many of them even on even on the discussion forums and on youtube and what have you so um anyway um i'm sure it's a fantastic watch uh, I've, I've never owned it i've never even tried one on my wrist but of course then uh, just recently Swatch decided to do the same the same principle they applied to the Moon Swatch they applied it to the Blanc Palm the 50 Fathoms and they've come out with this range of uh, of, of 50 Fathoms plastic uh, copies if you like plastic pastiches uh, of that fantastic watch um, and uh, and just recently and this is why I'm making this video just recently they've just released uh, an all black one, a completely blacked out one, which I'm sure people are going to go nuts for and there's already loads of videos on YouTube about how great it is. Um, but honestly guys, I just think, why, why the hell uh, a Swatch uh, doing this, you know, because nobody else in the in the watch world is doing this, you know, the other the other big players in the in the watch market, they're not releasing pastiches, um, you know, homages of their own product uh, at a cheap price made of plastic. And we've all heard the stories about, you know, the buttons that come off of the moon swatch, you know, if you just catch them on your jeans, you know, and the button pops off, <laughs> the chronograph pusher pops off. And I'm sure we'll start to hear the same things about the uh, about the 50 Fathoms copy uh, quite soon about it breaking. And, and I've also read um, that the movement in that 50 Fathoms, although it's an automatic movement, uh, it's not serviceable. So, you know, so it's kind of a, 
I just don't see the point and I, I just think it's a shame. So I was thinking to myself, why have Swatch done this? You know, what, why have they chosen to go down this path of, of taking, uh, you know, the, the great watches that, that they make and just making plastic copies of them? And then it's occurred to me uh, just recently why they may have done this. And um, it may have been to save the Swatch brand. And forgive me if you guys have already cottoned onto this and you've moved on uh, and, you, and you get why they've done it, but it may be to save the Swatch brand because, and, and it makes sense, you can only get these watches if you go to the Swatch boutique you, and you've got a you know, queue in line. You can't order these watches online uh, and you can't get them from e even Swatch authorised dealers. You have to get them from the Swatch boutiques of which around the world there are I don't know how many, but there are hundreds of Swatch boutiques. I don't know exactly how many, but there are hundreds, aren't there, of Swatch boutiques around the world. And it's it's very likely that that Swatch released these watches knowing that there'd be a craze, knowing that people would be queuing up down the street outside the Swatch boutique to buy them. And I, I've come to the realisation, guys, I think there's a very strong likelihood that they, the reason they did that was because the Swatch brand, the Swatch, the Swatch boutiques just weren't getting any customers, they weren't getting any business. And it's very likely that Swatch looked at that whole business model and said, this isn't working, we're going to have to close these boutiques, these Swatch boutiques, because nobody's coming into them anymore. And actually the product that we sell is, is cheap and although the profit margin is good, the dollar value is not very good. We're not selling enough. We're not making enough money. We're not, we've not got enough revenue. Um, so Swatch probably said, we're gonna have to close all these boutiques. I think that's what happened, particularly post COVID. I think that's probably what, uh, what happened. So in some respects, I think it was a really, really smart move that they made. Uh, they said, how do we get people back into our boutiques? How do we get customers back in our boutiques, spending money, wanting our product again? Because clearly they don't. And so what they've done is, of course, they've piggybacked off of the back of, you know, two, they're basically their two uh, most iconic watches in the whole Swatch group, which is the 50 Fathoms and the Speedmaster. Um, and that's basically how they've saved uh, those hundreds of boutiques from closing because now people are going into those boutiques uh, <laughs> you know that every time you go on holiday and you see a swatch boutique I bet you go in it now don't you just just in case they might have a, a, a moon swatch for sale and you're not doing it necessarily anymore because you're going to make a profit you're doing it because it's the only watch that swatch make now that you are actually familiar with and and actually it might be a bit of fun to go and buy one if you can get one at retail but if you can't, if you walk in and you can't and they haven't got one, you might end up looking at something and thinking, oh, that, that, that thing there, that's, that's only a hundred bucks. I think I might get that anyway, you know, for my daughter or for my son or for my auntie or uncle or my, you know, my father-in-law or something like that. Um, so, yeah, like, I think that's, I think that's what it comes down to, guys. I think, you know, Swatch have, have done this. They've made this move because it was the only thing, it was the, it was almost the, the last shot they had at, at keeping their, their brand alive, the Swatch brand alive, at keeping those boutiques open. And it's obviously worked for them because I don't think they're closing boutiques um, at any great rate anyway. So it does, it asks, it begs the question, where do they go next? What are they going to do next? So they've done the, you could almost say they've done the 50 fathoms now. They, they've kind of run run out of gas on that one, I think, already. Um, look, they're, they're actually quite nice looking watches. I think the moon swatches are ugly things. Um, I, I think they're crap, if I'm honest. Um, the, the 50 fathoms looks like a nicer watch. I really like the India one. Um, I don't know when I'd wear it. It's a bit like those Seiko 5 models. Um, you know, the Street Fighter series, you know, they're lovely things to look at, but when are you actually going to wear it? Um, and I think that's the, that's the problem, that, and that's why I'll probably never buy one, but I do like the look of some of them. Um, where does Swatch go? Because, you know, no question, the minute Swatch stop doing this, the minute they stop releasing pastiches and homages of watches, of other watches they already make, those Swatch stores, um, the, the amount of visitors will completely cease and those Swatch stores will probably have to close. So let's assume that Swatch are going to have to keep doing this now because they found a way to keep their business alive. Um, how, are they, how are they going to sort of go into 2024 and, and, and beyond and 2025 and 26? Because they've probably got a five-year business plan and we're only in really year two or three of that business plan. Well, it's likely that they're going to do something with the Seamaster, isn't it? I mean, that would be the next logical step is do something with the Seamaster. I think they've, they've definitely... Um, you know, done their dash, you know, with the, with the Speedy. I, I think they've 
you know, milk that cow uh, for, for as long as they can. And, and they're now looking probably at the, at the Seamaster. So that's my prediction actually, guys, going into, you know, the next year or two, I think Swatch will probably do something with the Seamaster. They will have to be very, very careful, of course, because the Seamaster is, um, how can I put it? A lot of us Amiga fans uh, are very, very protective over the Seamaster. There's a lot wrong with the Seamaster, I think. There's a lot wrong with the current Seamaster. Um, which is different to the uh, the Speedmaster because the current iteration of the Speedmaster that's been out for two or three years now, I think it's fantastic. I love I love everything about that. I don't actually know why I've never bought one yet. I really don't. I've tried it on a couple of times. It's a lovely watch to put on. It's the right size. I'm not even sure why I haven't bought one yet, and I think I will probably get one soon. Um, but this, the Seamaster's got a lot wrong with it, and I think right now, I think if Swatch were to do something um, cheap and cheerful and nasty, you know, with a plastic Seamaster, they might just tip us, tip us Amiga fans over the edge. So it will be interesting. I'm watching that space with great interest. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. I mean, this was just a quick video just to share my views. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. So please do let me know if you think I am. Um, I don't know anything more than you guys do. I'm just, uh, I'm just a random guy on YouTube who's making videos um, about watches. So let me know what you think and I look forward to seeing you on the next video guys. Cheers!